Up ahead used to be a tunnel. Now it's a pile of rocks that we're gonna slam into. What happened to the tunnel? And how badly did this car get damaged? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're gonna be taking a look at a map called Jungle Rock Nature Preserve, which is a modified version of Jungle Rock Island. And the idea for this map is you have the regular Jungle Rock Island and then it's converted into a nature preserve. So the roads are still here, but after many, many years, nature has started to take back over the roads. So you can still find the shape of the roads, but they're covered with dirt and grass. So you're not really driving on roads, you're just driving on open space. But interestingly, it actually feels more natural like this and then with paved roads to me because the trees already encroach so much into the road it just makes sense for the road to also be messed up and that's why the trees are allowed to get so close to it anyways let's do a little crash just jumping right down here into the sand which probably actually means we get less damage in this version of the map because in the other one that would be a much harder surface but the sand is nice and soft and it kind of absorbs the impact although the vehicle not really driving good the front suspension is messed up and it's pulling hard to the side and we can't accelerate that well but we can accelerate enough to continue driving for another impact and I thought for a second I was going to spin out there so keep on going truck get up to like 40 miles per hour and once you go on fast enough we are going to crash you into some trees oh well or not sort of we sort of crashed into the trees they bounced right off of me and I just keep on going along we need to find a different tree to crash into so we want to get up to about 50 miles per hour again, and then here are some trees. Crash into one, truck. Thank you. Next question, can the truck drive? Yes-ish, the front drive shaft is broken, but we can put power down to the rear, but very, very badly. So we're not going to be able to drive out of here. So just a quick look at the damage to the vehicle. From the right side, not too bad. From the left side, oh, it's really messed up. And yes, when you're looking at the front of the vehicle, the right side is the left and the left side is the right. It all depends on your perspective. So next up, let's try the off-road version of the Sunburst because that seems like it'd be one of the best suited cars for this. It's nice and fast, but it has the extra ground clearance you may need to drive on the dirt. Although, so far in my experience, you don't really need any extra ground clearance than the normal version because the roads are still mostly smooth. Like, they're so smooth. I still call them roads even though there's technically not any road here we're just looking at some grass that happens to be where a road used to be anyways crash time hitting the rear of the vehicle at like hundred miles per hour that's gonna do some decent damage to it once it gets through the bushes we can take a look so can we drive not really but we can look at the damage so not too bad looking cosmetically in the rear lots of damage in the front though and a lot of damage on this side as well and we're doing the one car one crash setup here so let's go ahead and go to the Tograk QE and if you see that big rock straight ahead that is where the lighthouse would normally be but there just isn't one now so it's just a big pile of rocks on the beach and by the way I chose the Tograk because it makes a lot of sense here we have less ground clearance than a pickup truck or the off-road car we were driving earlier but still more than your average vehicle it's also electric which means it's not going to pollute the untouched lands although i am going to be leaving tire marks wherever i go the way i'm bouncing so those will be noticeable for anybody who wants to go to the nature preserve and you know what the neat thing is is when you leave rubber on rocks the rain washes the rubber off and then the animals drink that rainwater, and then the hunter kills that animal and your family eats that animal and before you know it you are literally eating a car okay enough nonsense let's crash this guy right into some trees Ooh. That was actually a hard crash. I thought we would kind of bounce off the trees a little bit, but it said, no, you are smacking into these trees. So we're going to have to pull it out to take a better look at the damage and whip it around. Perfect. And ooh, that is some damage. So we don't need the ground clearance, but it does look cool as you drive through. That's for sure. So we're going to get the Baja version of the pickle because that one looks cool. And then also it's nice that it has a couple of extra engine upgrades over the regular pickles because the regular pickles are kind of slow to drive. With this one, it's fast enough. It's not fast, but it's enough. And I also noticed a lot of the trees around the area are different, so you can't use those as landmarks when you're comparing the two maps. You have to actually look at the road you're driving on 
and find the equivalent road based on the curves in the road. And soon we will be seeing one of the few remaining structures on the island. So you might be wondering, why are some structures still left but others are gone? That's because these ones are really old. And hold on a sec, we're gonna flip this guy. Oh yeah, now land on your wheels. No, not really. Come on, wheels, yes! It actually landed on its wheels. Let's go, keep driving. So as I was saying, the one structure that's left is because it was an alternative timeline. Where on this one, after the war, it's turned into a nature preserve, so there are no modern buildings. And right up here on our left, you can see the structure. And we can't drive up to it. We could always drive up to it, though. We could do that in the original one or this one. But we'll go ahead and drive up to it from the other side. I wanted to give you guys a view from below first because I get to maintain my momentum if we do the view from below. To go up onto it, we gotta lose momentum, especially from this direction. We gotta do a whole 180 maneuver. And I didn't quite line this up right, but we can make it. There we go. And then we gotta follow this grassy trail just for a little bit. And then, what are we going to do with one of the few man-made structures that remains? We're going to crash into it. What else are you going to do besides crash into it? That's what we do with everything. Tree, rock, other cars, other cars that have already crashed, structures. Yeah, we crash into those. So let's try to see, is there a wall behind the tree? Yes, there is. And we can probably see it if we rotate the camera around. Yep, there's the wall that I just slammed into. Alrighty then, and we are actually stuck. So I'm going to just bring the car off of the wall and we're going to go to the extreme. So we see we don't need a real fancy off-road car. Does that mean we could drive around with the stanced version of the Pessima? We're going to find out. And this first section is probably going to be the worst because this was never a paved road. This was always a dirt road. But once we get through this first section, I feel like we're going to be okay. Yeah, very, very bumpy. I know, Pessima. Just survive. Oh my goodness, we're going over the rocks. That's fine. That is actually okay. It's still driving, so it is fine. And the road we're driving on right now, that was a dirt road, but this road here was a paved road. So this is the real test. We're going 60 miles per hour through here, and it seems pretty smooth. I'm not having any problems with loss of control. We're sliding around the corners nice and easy, and we're still accelerating all the way up to 70 miles per hour. And here's the strategy. We are gonna floor it, and we aren't gonna let up. We're just gonna go really, really fast, and if we crash, we crash. We're up to about 80 miles per hour. We were at 90 for a second, but I scrubbed off some speed when I slid. About 90, here we go. Oh, this corner looks tight. I don't think we're gonna make this corner. No way, no way, yeah, okay. Hold on, am I still drive after that? I think all the impact was kinda on the rear of the vehicle. Oh wait, no. The wheels look like they're pointed in slightly different directions, so my steering's gonna be messed up. Is that gonna stop me? Yeah, probably should. I can't really steer this thing much at all. And now we need to find the perfect crash spot. And since I don't like driving this thing because it's steering so bad, the perfect spot is straight ahead. Wherever we end up on the beach, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty cool. I like that crash. Don't go in the water. I'm trying to take a look at the damage. So there is the damage. And then we'll pull the car back onto the roads. And let's switch it out for something, again, a little bit different. We're going to go with a high-powered rear-wheel drive car, so we're going to get the Demon version of the 200BX. And here's a fun fact for you guys. Normally, you would never really see this corner because you'd be inside of a tunnel. And here, there's absolutely no remnants whatsoever of the tunnel, which means the tunnel didn't just degrade. It was simply never built in the first place. So anyways, I got the 200BX here because I thought it might be fun to try to slide around the corners. And so far, it's working pretty well. The only thing I noticed is I don't get to use full power on these drifts. I gotta use half power and really manage the throttle, but either way, it's a nice, enjoyable drive, even with this car. The thing is, every car I've driven so far has been nice and enjoyable, and I thought maybe it'd be too bumpy to go and drift around every corner, but I was wrong. We can drift around the corners just fine, although it is getting a little bit bumpy now, and we are upside down, and we are back on our wheels. All according to plan. That's even better than a drift. And now's a good time to mention, if I did that dumb thing where I had a random clip at the start of the video, I would be like, up ahead used to be a tunnel. Now, it's a pile of rocks that we're gonna slam into. What happened to the tunnel? And how badly did this car get damaged? Find out in this video. And the answer, pretty badly damaged. 
And following the one car one crash rule, we are done with the 200BX. So let's get an SBR4 and let's do the ESBR300. Normally when I do an ESBR, I always go straight to the top with 800. But we don't need that much power. We're driving through dirt after all. And when we drive with the electronic stability control on, this is as fast as it's going to go. So you can put it to sport mode and see if that helps at all. Not really, so even if we had an extra 500 horsepower, it's not going to change anything. Unless, of course, we turn the stability control off and then we just spin dirt all over the place because stability control is for nerds who like to control their vehicle. Me, I just want to throw dirt into the air. <laughs> I like doing it in reverse because you see the dirt more. So here is where the port would normally be. And you can kind of make out some of the areas too because the dirt over there and the original version. And we can go and just drive over there and check it out. And yes, we're going to drive over there by just driving straight through the water. Because the shortest path is almost always the fastest path. And look at that. Look at how fast that was. And yes, the reason I chose an electric vehicle was just so I could drive through the water like that. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I needed you for, ESBR. You are done now. And what do you do with an old car? Throw it into the ocean. Woo! It did a nice little hydroplaning maneuver there, but eventually it fell into the water. Because obviously it ain't a pair of jet skis. It ain't going to do that forever. So I'll go back over here and let's swap it out again. How about we go with an ETK 800? And I need speed this time. Let's get the TT Sport Plus. And once again, we need to drive through the sand. Although it seems like this one drives a lot faster through the sand than the ETK was, even though they both have the same level of electronic stability control. That is interesting. I guess it's just something to do with the way the electronic stability control works when you have an electric car versus a gas powered car, because that electric car always feels weird with the traction control on. It never feels like it's driving quite right. And another thing I noticed is when you slide around the corners with this thing, it taps the brakes for you a lot, because a lot of the time when you see the brakes flashing red, I'm not doing that. I'm just sliding around the corner trying to do a mean drift and the car's like, hey, no drifting allowed. And I'm like, yes, drifting allowed. We're going to slide this bad boy around the corner. Now, I don't know exactly where it is because it's kind of just off in a random spot. But somewhere on our right is one of the only structures I found that was added to this version of the map. Most of the time, it's just removing things or replacing the bridges with worse bridges. But this is an all new structure, not present on the original Jungle Rock Island. And it should be coming up really, really soon. So I'm trying to keep an eye out for it. And I think it's like right here in that opening. There, I just saw it. Slam on the brakes. We overshot it just a bit, but we can just back up to get to it. See, there it is. We actually didn't overshoot it that badly. So there's just a random dock in the middle of nowhere, which we can try to drive towards. Oh, except we might not make it there, apparently. That's not the way I thought that would go. Come on, stupid trees. How are you going to block my car like that? All I'm trying to do is show off the amazing dock. All right, so here it is. I don't know why it's here. I don't know if it's supposed to be here, but it is here. And you can drive on it just fine. And I will go and prove that to you. Watch as I drive on it just fine until, of course, we drive off the edge and then we're going to crash the car. Fine, car crash. And engine flooded. Car done. Look at damage. Reset car in three, two, one. You know the rules, and so do I. One car, one crash. Next car. How about a Legron? And we're going to get the custom version just so we can go somewhat fast with this not very fast vehicle, although we are pointed the wrong direction. Now, that quote I just said, though, I can't remember what it's from. Somebody has to remind me. I'm pretty sure it's from like a famous 80s song or something, but I don't know 80s music that well. For now, let's just go ahead and focus on how is the Legrand doing climbing the mountain. It's actually doing pretty good. We got enough speed to slide around the corners, and it really does not have very good traction going through here. Every time I go around a corner, we're just going to whip it sideways because that seems to be the best way to go through it at decent speeds. Uh, we're real rally racing now, boys. It's funny though, every time I use the Legrand Custom, it finds a way to impress and surprise me. And here, this would normally be a flowing water source, but now it's just mud. 
So if we wanted to, we could go and drive down it. We just need a car that's a little bit better for driving through the mud. And first off, getting to the mud, that's probably going to be the hardest part. So we got a nice big off-road van. And let's see what he can do. We are not going to go easy into the mud. We're going to just charge into it and keep on charging through it and see just how well the van does. And so far, the van does well. And the good news is, is this is not a long route, so you can keep just powering through it. And if I have my fingers crossed, I won't crash, even though I'm just basically flooring it nonstop. So there is the end of things, and let's have a dramatic finish. Come on, can we roll it onto its side or something? Oh, yes. Perfect crash landing into water. That is a 10 out of 10 at the Olympics. I had a very small splash and everything. Back up to Mr. Legrand. We're going to do a quick crash with him. And then it will be time for a new vehicle. We got this great straightaway here that allows us to get up to like 60 miles per hour. And that's a good speed for a good crash. And we really can't see the damage too much because we are covered in trees. That is one problem with even regular Jungle Rock Island. So there's what we can see of the damage and we'll bring it off for the trees. And time for another car change. Let's go with an Ibishu Pigeon. Not exactly the first choice for an off-road vehicle, but it should do all right. Considering we use the stance to pass the mud just fine, the pigeon should work too. Although, we could do dumb things like trying to climb the mud mountains like so, which it actually can do, apparently. I thought I was going to get stuck, but no, pigeon is strong. That's why we get the 600cc version, so we can do things like that. But another neat thing is this pigeon is actually less likely to tip over on this version of the map than the normal one, I think because when we turn in really tight at high speeds, we just kind of slide like that and then lose control. We don't tip, we just lose control. Now, which is better, which is worse? I would say flipping over is more better because it's just more interesting to take a look at. So let's go ahead and try to tip it over by doing a nice big jump off of the side of the mountain and wow, somehow we made it all the way down to the beach and we still have drivability. That is not at all what I expected, but there's nothing really down here to take a look at. So let's just go ahead and bring the pigeon back up to the road, and then we're going to do a small test. We're going to see what happens if we try to spawn up traffic on the map. Because normally the map would support traffic because it has roads on it. Without there being roads, unfortunately, the traffic does not work. Even though there are paths there, the traffic is not smart enough to actually make use of it. And I just realized... I broke the rule. One car, one crash. You're supposed to be replaced. Who have we not driven yet? How about we go with an ETK i series? There's even a nice fancy rally version we can use. And again, rally is probably overkill here, but it's fun to drive fast, especially through here because with the rally car on this terrain, you can just slide through every corner. Well, once you're up to speed, I couldn't really slide through that one because I was still initially accelerating. Now we could slide through every corner because we're going like 70 miles per hour already. And we got to those speeds while climbing a hill. Man, the pigeon worked fine, but having a real race car, that's nice. That's real nice. All right, we have a bridge directly ahead of us. Let's see, can we cross it? Oh, wow. I just grinded the bridge as I crossed it. That was beautiful. I'm not even paying attention to where I'm driving anymore. Apparently, I drove off of the hills. But that was still so beautiful when I crossed the bridge. And ooh, ooh, turn off the engine. The car can still drive all we gotta do is pull it out of the water and we're gonna do this the manual way node grabber let's go get this poor car nice and dry it's on its side that's fine all right whoa don't crash start the engine back up hey look at that and the engine is drying up and it's as good as it's ever been okay it is pulling maybe a little bit to the left and the door is kind of busted but we're flying off of a mountainside that water did a really nice job of cushioning the impact. And I know when I had the pigeon I was down here, I said there's nothing to do. That was also because the pigeon was slow. This car is fast, so we can pretty easily get to where I want to go. And hey, what? Oh, that is hilarious. You know what this is, I bet? If we go up here, this is probably the road I was on when I spawned up the traffic. And it just made a straight line of cars going literally off of the mountainside and just down here wherever so it almost looks like they're just abandoned cars now <laughs> especially that t-series over there he is completely off path and if we wanted to we could tell the ai to do very basic things like if we try to do traffic or random it's not going to work but they can chase me at least which is something 
It's not very good in this situation because I have no way to really start getting moving. So they're just going to bully me. Come on, start accelerating, car. Like you saw the car was just sitting there like it wanted to get crashed into. I don't know what in the world the transmission was doing, but that wasn't even fair. I couldn't drive at all because they were hitting me the second I tried to drive. But I can teleport away from them. <laughs> How did you even flip over? I don't understand. What happened? Everybody's just wrecked here. We reset everybody. Except again, I don't have any momentum going, so I don't know if I'm going to get away from them. And actually, not a problem. We easily got away from them. <laughs> Those cars in the back, they just drive right off the mountain, don't they? Hold on a second. Look at these idiots. They're going to just drive right off the mountain. <laughs> there they go. T-Series. I think there's a couple more that will be coming down, right? They'll be coming down the mountain. When they come, where are they at? Where are they at? Oh, he flipped over up there. Oh, well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you guys doing over here, huh? Turn my engine off. Secret strategy, get the AI to drown their cars, but my car is also drowned. I was hoping I could make it where it doesn't drown. All right, let's just go and get away from the AI. That's enough messing around with them. I'm sure they won't be able to keep up with me because I have an all-wheel drive rally car driving through this sand. They got not that, to put it kindly. They don't got anything close to that. Oh, can we cut this water? Oh, yes. It did like a little wheelie in the water, which kept the engine nice and dry. That was beautiful. And if we keep driving around through here a little bit more, there should be a way to connect back to the main road. Oh, there it is. Overshot it just a tad because it came out of nowhere. But if we go through here, just like that. Oh, come on, come on. Yes. We are now back on the main road. And actually, we've basically done a whole circle of the map. So I think this is a perfect place to end the video. So until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how many buildings are missing and how messed up the roads are. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.